this time, Dee Garcia and Jamie Martinson are going to come up and give a quick introduction of dual language in our, in, our, in our program, as well as introduce a team that's here to present and share some of the great things that are happening throughout the School District of Waukesha. Good evening. How are y'all doing? Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. There we go. I'm sorry. All right. Well, thank you so much for having us. We're hoping tonight that we're going to be able to have a conversation with you about some of the more creative things that are happening in the School District of Waukesha, thanks to your leadership in the past um, five, eight years or so. Um, tonight we will be promoting, once again, dual language um, through Bright Lights. We last saw you in May where we presented our 6th and 7th grade dual language expansion for the first time in 40 years of this program. Our middle school students are now seeing a multilingual, multicultural global education. Um, tonight we have a real treat for you. We'll spend approximately six to seven minutes kind of previewing the program through a YouTube video I've created for you. And then I'll introduce you to some of the voices of our families. Yes. One, one quick point of order. The, yes. Um, Mary Jo, the posting. Right online. Okay. Wrong it's wrong. So this wasn't given. It's right online. So okay. in your packets, it was wrong. Okay. Excellent. Thank okay. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for noticing that, Mr. McCaffrey. Sorry about that. No, no problem. Thanks, Pat. We have to be sure that we're legal. <laughs> sure. All good. Okay. So we will share a brief overview with you. We're hoping that the overview will support some of the documents you have in your board packet this evening. And um, how our program has grown to four elementary schools and three middle schools. Um, we will feature the voices of our dual language parents here from the School District of Waukesha, as well as some of our open enrollment students and parents who have carefully selected our district for their child's education. So I want to thank Jamie Martinson for the very hard work she does in developing the curriculum from K to 7th grade dual language, as well as our parents and our students for spending the time tonight to come and bring their aspirations of this program to you. So without further ado, I'd like to ask Mary Jo to please start the video. Good evening and welcome to the School District of Waukesha Bright Light CNI Committee Meeting, November 2014, featuring dual language. Our goal as educators is to educate for competency. In the 21st century, multilingualism will be essential to the global competency of our students. Students today are far more connected to the world than at any other time in history. And we have committed ourselves as an organization to nurture lifelong learners who will thrive in the local and global economy. In addition, dual language programs play a key role in eliminating the achievement gap for traditionally underserved students. Dual language provides the pathways for learners to study language and culture, to collaborate and think critically, and use their expanded worldview to communicate effectively. These skills will build a strong foundation for success and contribute greatly to the vitality of our future. We gather in this room tonight to create a vision, a vision that we will articulate together with students, parents, teachers, and our community to make this headline a reality. Dual language immersion is a unique pathway for students in Waukesha, and it is the only regional opportunity for multilingual global learning, K-8, to outside of the city of Milwaukee. The School District of Waukesha Dual Language Program is an innovative pathway for bilingualism and biliteracy, career and college preparation, through pathways to access advanced placement, and will offer students the opportunities to earn state seals and awards for their long-term commitment, effort, participation, and above all, achievement in dual language. The School District of Waukesha Dual Language Program is a research-based model for academic achievement known as 90-10. Students start kindergarten immersed 90% of their learning time in Spanish. By fourth grade, English and Spanish are equal amounts of learning time. In the middle school grades, all dual language students access dual language arts and one content area in dual language. The 90-10 model has been measured for its effectiveness across the nation when compared to other programs. Locate the blue not line. The blue line represents the two-way dual language model. As you can see, I have placed a sun on that line as one of our dual language 
middle school cohorts has exceeded the mean of all sixth grade students in that school. Those students are now seventh graders and all of them are or were English language learners. As we can see, we can expect our students to achieve and meet the mean of all students by the eighth grade. However, all of the subsequent programs where the home language is used temporarily, like in late exit transitional, early exit transitional, content area support for ESL or pullout programs, demonstrate a bleak future. The results seen in this table depend upon our leadership for the K-12 pathway and excellent teaching practices and learning opportunities. There's been a world of enrollment growth set in motion by the development of our two-way programs. In 2010, we enrolled 100 kindergartners in dual language, a number that has increased steadily to 127, 152, and this year in 2014 to 172 kindergartners. Those numbers can be easily transposed as our first kindergarten students enter sixth grade next year. As you can see, with each additional year of increased K-5 enrollment and demand, we will see subsequent needs to grow opportunities at grades 6 to 12. In 2014, 900 School District of Waukesha and Open Enrollment Dual Language students benefit from the advantages that you have provided to them. Your leadership on this committee and board has allowed students to, to benefit from long-term cognitive rewards of bilingualism, enhanced working memory, cognitive flexibility and approaches to learning, protection from brain aging symptoms, increased ability to focus, improved problem solving and analytic skill, self-fulfillment and relationships, increased academic performance and access to advanced placement, and increased lifetime income and employability. As we move forward tonight, we have brought to you members of the dual language student, teaching, and parent community who will share their vision for their children's pathways. We hope together we will graduate globally competent and concerned citizens who are able to make a significant local and global contribution and excel as future leaders in an international environment. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask Jamie Martinson to introduce our panel of dual language parents representing Banting and Bethesda Elementary School, as well as our staff member, Omar Massis, who has um, launched the dual language two-way program at Blair Elementary School this year. All of our parents and students have um, messages that they would like to communicate to you, as well as an openness to answer any of your questions or concerns um, going forward. So thank you very much for your time this evening. Right, I'd like to introduce Mark and Caitlin Fortin. They are from Banting Elementary. We have Rosa Zibel and Diego from Banting. Bryn Schaefer from Bethesda. And then our teacher representative, Omar Massis from Blair. Okay, if any of our families would like to take a moment to address the, the CNI committee. Sure, I'll go ahead. Hi, my name is Mark Fortin. I am a uh, parent of Caitlin Fortin here, who is a fifth grader at Banting. Um, we were part of the original uh, pilot group that went into Banting the very first year. Um, so she's in her, in, actually this is her sixth year now and going into sixth grade. And really we just wanna say how wonderful the program has been for her. Um, kind of going into kindergarten, our story was we really didn't know where she was gonna go. We were actually relocating at the time to from Pewaukee to Waukesha. So we're kind of, do we want to live in Pewaukee? Do we want to live in Waukesha? Where would we be? We looked at, we were renting at the time, looking at houses and kind of looking at schools and shopping around because that was a big influencer for us. Um, and at the time, it was just kind of talking about it, uh, the program. And um, Caitlin is a pretty advanced uh, student. She's in gifted and talented, usually scores exceptionally high on her tests. So we really were looking for something a little bit more um, what are we going to do with this child? What are we going to do with her that she's going to go into kindergarten already reading uh, quite a bit and you know we were afraid she'd get bored. 
Um, so one of the things that really attracted us, we were looking at Banting. We met with Cynthia Gannon, um, Marla Larson, who was the teacher the first year, as well as Jamie, um, and as they were kind of going through and looking at uh, the study behind dual language. And um, so we kind of really took a leap of faith of what we wanted. You know, we heard about the program. We didn't know a lot about it. Um, you know, obviously every parent has concerns. This is our, my only child, so I've got one shot to make it right, you know. Um, you know, there's no looking back and, and trying again. So, um, you know, really kind of took a look at that and what would be best for her and, uh, you know, kind of long term. And so what sold us on the, pro you know, the program is just kind of the, some of the information that you sent, but we didn't have that data at that time. We just really had what we, what uh, Cynthia and Marla uh, Larson and Jamie had told us at the time. So. Um, we made the decision to go forward with it, um, you know, and we're in that first program. We couldn't be happier with our decision. I couldn't have imagined um, a different experience for Caitlin, um, just based on, you know, what we've gone through over the last six years. Um, so really why we chose the program is really just what they showed us. Their enthusiasm was our initial, but kind of going through it, we wanted something that was more for her in her education than just being in kindergarten, kind of there would probably have been a sense of boredom for her um, and that, and we probably would have had to look at trying to get her more challenging. So this was an initial challenge for her right off the bat, really kept her motivated to learn, um, to be engaged and to continue to be challenged every day instead of coming into kindergarten and, okay, I already know how to read this, I know how to do my math, um, you know, so she, it really was great for her. Um, you know, it really wasn't, you know, the other schools didn't compare once we heard about the program, you know, um, so. Um, you know, some of the things that we've kind of seen over the years of her changing and, and things that I think that are different for her is probably her analytical and problem solving skills. Um, really, she compares a lot of things um, between the languages, but not only that, as she's looking at science problems or reading things, uh, just a sense of looking at things on two different ways, considering things, and I don't know that we would have that same thing because she started comparing things in English and Spanish. And as you saw from the program, it was 90% Spanish the first year. Um, so right away, um, you know, she was really immersed into the language. And she is a native English speaker, and her and my wife, we, or my wife and myself, we don't speak any Spanish or very, we don't, you know, my wife took a little in high school, but, you know, that fades in time is <laughs> if we don't, you know, it was kind of a traditional. So neither of us had that, that dual language background. Um, you know, and so we really saw that. We also saw, you know, friendships happen across different, you know, so there's native Spanish speakers and native English speakers. So we saw friendships cultivate with people um, which you probably wouldn't have been able to interact with in a traditional uh, English classroom. And um, what was great for not only her is that the teachers cultivated a culture where it was a community that was built. Um, and as Rose is here and Diego, we know them very well. They were, they came out at the same time, but everyone in the first couple of years that we followed along the path. We've become friends with the families, created a community, um, and you know, met people from different backgrounds, different cultures. And I think it was a much more unique and tight-knit group of family and friends um, and, and students that were invested into the program than you may have seen in a regular environment. Because we were all kind of in this together, um, giving each other our feedback and thoughts and working with teachers. Um, you know, and, um, speaking kind of from my own profession, I'm a talent recruitment manager at GE Healthcare here in town. Um, so I really see the importance of this. It is a competitive world out there. Not only that, it's a diverse workforce, diverse customer force. So companies right now are trying to really invest a lot of money in diversity, not only diversity um, as if you may see different races or different um, you know, socioeconomical backgrounds, but diverse experience. Um, so if we look at that, we are always looking at to diversify our workforce, and by doing that, we strengthen our workforce because we're mirroring our customers, we're mirroring um, what, what's going on out there in, in the world, and if, um, you know, if we just kind of have a real homogenous workforce, we're not going to be a successful company. And so I see that day to day, every day, and the, the amount of money that we try to invest in getting people that have a a dual language background or some kind of diverse background, and like I said, diverse and just a learning background um, that can work for a global organization. Um, this program is really gonna help out these folks. You know, Diego, Caitlin, the other children that are gonna have a, like a leg up on everybody else. You know, they're already gonna come out, you know, very successful hopefully, but on top of that, they're gonna have this dual language experience and be able to speak um, two languages. Um, and really, it's, an, you know, it's been great for our entire family. You know, we just feel like it's been a great educational experience, something I would have never imagined from the school district of Waukesha. 
Um, you just didn't know what we were getting into, and it's been, it's been wonderful all the way through. Um, you know, then also, you know, as she's going in forward into fifth and sixth grade, I hope that she gets continued opportunities to advance and to be challenged. Um, you know, as we look at this, we just kind of don't want it to die out. You know, we've had so much invested in this, you know, time-wise, emotionally, um, you know, as well as just, you know, we've made such great friends and progress. We really want it to continue on as much as possible. So she's challenged, so she doesn't get to high school and all of a sudden, you know, there's nothing there to support her, you know, support the kids that have been in the program. Um, I th really think that it's important. And then I think it's something that the school district of Waukesha can really hang their hat on as this program continues to mature. This is a place when I talk to people at work or talk to people from other states when I'm traveling, I tell them about this program. They think it's a, is this a private school, a special school? You know, how do you get into this? You know, they're amazed at what's offered here. And I think it's just really something that we can really be proud of for the school district. And it's something that where people are gonna wanna be here more and more uh, in school choice and you know, people are gonna be fighting for spots. And I just think as we see the success of that, it really is gonna be a model for other schools. And I don't know if they're already feeling this, but people may be copying the model uh, moving forward. So it's really something that you know, we can um, you know, showcase for other schools and other school districts, I think. Um, you know, and I just think it's been, you know, going forward, I'd li really love to see you continue on high school and college, maybe do study abroad, and then, you know, maybe move into some kind of, you know, um, job where she's happy and she has a, maybe a global exposure where she's using this. I mean, there's really a lot of emerging markets in Central and South America for companies. Um, and, you know, I think that's an opportunity that she will have, whatever she does, um, to do that as well as here, uh, you know, domestically, you know, um, Spanish language speakers are really a, a fast growing population. And anybody who has that dual language is gonna um, kind of have a foot up in the, uh, the job market right now. Um, so those kind of my dreams and, and thoughts of it. Um, you know, people, I kind of was looking at that chart and one of our big concerns, you know, kind of going in was what's gonna happen to our English language skills? And I've, I've heard that from a lot of people, you know, is she gonna kind of, uh, you know, plateau on those English language skills? And it hasn't been the case. It's been actually the opposite. Um, right now, Caitlin is reading at a 11th grade level, and she's in fifth grade. I mean, obviously, it's a little bit of an exception, but it continued to kind of skyrocket. That English, you know, Spanish was going up, and English continued to go up because she's using the troubleshooting skills that she has from learning both languages and applying them across both. So, I, you know, obviously, her case is a little bit unique, but, um, you know, she's done amazing in English and math, and all of these things have been great. Um, and Spanish continues to do very well, and I just, uh, I think it's been a great program. So I didn't know if anybody had any questions for myself or Caitlin uh, specifically. Are you speaking Spanish now? Mr. Horton, are you speaking Spanish now? Oh, do I speak Spanish? No, but I, as they were all, all talking um, in Spanish, Rosa, and, you know, and uh, Jamie and them, they were asking, I can pick up what they're saying and I could understand what they were saying. I don't speak Spanish well, but um, I can understand it now a lot more than I could before Good. by just kind of looking and hearing what she does. So, Good. yeah. I think my wife's come along a lot better than I had. She had a little bit of a background in Spanish, and, but I, I really myself don't, I can't speak Spanish. <laughs> well, thank you for your very positive remarks sure. about our school district because those of us on the board know what a wonderful school district right. this is, and uh, thank you for sure. reminding us. Yeah, I mean, it was really a leap of faith that we took, and we couldn't be happier. You, sometimes you got to go into things, and That's people right. are telling you things. There's, there was really not a ton of data for this district, you know, so it's been great. Mr. Baumgart? A couple of things. One is maybe we have a creative marketing department. We can <laughs> 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 look at bringing you in. <laughs> but some of the things that you've said are, are exactly the way, and we, we knew uh, this this. Well, the committee was different a few years ago, but we knew that this was one of those things you try and you always worry a little bit about is it the right thing to do or not. Uh, I've been on this board in my 20th year and we've d tried many things and fortunately most of them have worked out. That's right. In fact, I'm trying to find one that right now that didn't, but we won't talk about <laughs> it. Yeah. But uh, I appreciate what you said about the fact that you, know, that you, you went into something that was new to you and actually new to us. But knowing Cynthia, knowing Marla, I, I was pretty confident that uh, we were going with a good thing. Caitlin, I, I visited your class when you were in kindergarten and I visited it when you were in first grade and I saw a huge difference. I don't remember you specifically, but I saw a huge difference from one September to the next September back four years ago or whenever that was. And 
uh, you tell us what you think about the program. In Spanish. No, no, no. <laughs> and English. In English. I think that the dual language program is really an exciting opportunity because, I mean, I've been doing this for such a long time. Spanish has been become a second nature to me. I can just speak Spanish if if someone asks me a question in Spanish, but I'm talking to someone else in English. So great, thank you, Caitlin. Do you hear? think in Spanish? Pardon? I'm wondering if she thinks in Spanish. I don't really think in Spanish. Okay. Because some kids have told me that they they think in Spanish. Are we going to hear from the other family? Yes, we are. I can wait. I, I'll ask later. Okay, let's ahead. move on then. Hi, my name is Rosa Sibel. I live in Pewaukee. My son is Diego. And we decided to apply for the um, out of district for the program, the dual program in Waukesha. Uh, I'm from Spain, like I assume everybody assume I got a thick accent. I moved from Spain 13 years ago, and I wasn't able to speak any English at that time. So I, the school district, the, the the district in in the United States didn't transfer the credits from the uh, Spain, so I started to go to school to take English as a second language first, and then I did all my way down through the nursing program. So I did CNA, LPN, an associate in nursing, and a bachelor in nursing. Now I'm working in research with the medical college, and I'm still working as a nurse with the neediest population in Waukesha, which means I usually speak Spanish on a regular basis. When my son was born, Diego, I married with a person, an American person who doesn't speak a single word of Spanish. <laughs> so also he got two, two kids from his previous marriage. So when we got our first kid together, it was a kind of conflicted situation because they, all the education for the previous two kids was in Pewaukee School District, and here I was uh, pushing towards the idea that my kid has to be uh, Spanish-speaking and also dual-speaking if it was possible, but mostly Spanish. In my mind, it was no a question about English, but uh, it was about the Spanish. So he was the one that took a leap of faith on me, and he said, yeah, whatever, go forward, choose whatever you decide. And it was a kind of um, blind target at the very beginning, because when we were talking and asking everybody, everybody was sending us to Milwaukee, to the dual programs or the programs that got immersion in Spanish language in Milwaukee. And it was a kind of uh, disappointment to us to be thinking it has to move in him or transporting him every day to Milwaukee. And finally, somebody talked to us about the, the dual program, and it was Mr. Macias, because at that time, Diego was enrolled in, in Blair School. So we decided to pursue it, and since that moment, for us, it has been a fantastic support. In my home, my, the first language of my husband is English because he doesn't speak or understand anything in Spanish other than cerveza and si sí and no. <laughs> and and in, my, in my work is only Spanish because I feel kind of weird uh, talking with my kids in, in another language, which is not my first language, English. I obviously have to think before I speak in English, and I don't have to do it in Spanish, so it's a natural way for me to speak with them. And I really think my son's first language was Spanish, and still today he's totally bilingual, and he can read, speak, and write equally perfect in both languages. And I really think he flips both languages without hesitate a second. So his ability to speak with my husband or with me in, in both languages is amazing because for me, English always will be my second language. For, um, for my husband, Spanish will be always a second language, but for him is in a way that both languages are equally natural without an accent in English or in Spanish. 
And you can try. Here's Diego. <laughs> I like the dual language program because when I am older, I want to be a doctor, and I think it will help me get that job e easily. Um, How do you speak? ¿Cómo hablas con tus hermanos en casa? Dilo. En inglés. Uh -huh. Tienes que hablar en inglés con ellos. ¿Por qué? Porque no entiendo el español. <laughs> he's, he's wonder why he has to speak in English with everybody else. <laughs> Diego, can you tell us? Um, I like my orange coat, or why you're wearing your orange coat in Spanish. Um. Estoy usando um, esto porque tengo mucho frío cuando estoy afuera. Yeah, mucho frío. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Tell us what that meant, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Diles lo que significa en inglés. I'm using this coat because when I'm outside, um, I'm really cold. Yep. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Gracias. Okay. That's good. Sure. Okay. Hey, my name is Brenda Schaefer, and um, my daughter's in first grade at Bethesda. And I could piggyback a lot on what they've already said, um, so I won't get too much into that. I'll try. Um, I'll start out by saying that we came across the dual language program. Our home school is Rose Glen. And I wanted to send my kids somewhere with a little bit more diversity. Um, you know, culturally, socioeconomically, everything like that. So I started looking at what else the district had to offer. And, you know, I came across STEM and dual language were, you know, the most prominent options for me besides just a different school. And um, I, I have an affinity for Spanish. I took Spanish in high school. It was my major in college. <clears throat> Haven't used it a lot since then, but... Um, <laughs> I just thought that that would be a great opportunity to be surrounded by people from, the, you know, that she wouldn't normally maybe befriend. Um, for instance, birthday parties that she now gets to go to. I mean, there are certain cultural things that she gets to experience in, in that way that she maybe wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and the experience that she's had in the classroom of uh, learning the English speakers and the Spanish speakers learning from each other. Um, <clears throat> I, <clears throat> sorry, I get, get to witness the kids helping each other out, um, teaching each other, correcting each other, and there's no judgment, you know, because the native Spanish speakers are, you know, maybe trying to say some things in English and they're not getting it right. Well, the English speakers are there to help them out and help them correct it. And um, same the, goes the other way, you know. So it's just that uh, social aspect too. Uh, you know, learning the um, cultural things that she she's just started first grade, and the things that she has learned about cultures globally already is just you know pretty great. Things that they might not get into until later on in their education with social studies, things like that. Um, so I just think that. Besides the education that she's getting, which is the exact same as the other classes, except she's being taught in Spanish, she's not missing out on anything in math, reading, or anything like that. She's just learning it in another language, um, which is, like she mentioned, you know, um, thinking, or somebody said about thinking in Spanish or being able to, to switch off. Um, sometimes my daughter will hear something in Spanish and she'll respond. I'm not sure she recalls if she heard it in English or in Spanish. She's just responding to it, um, which is pretty great. I think that as adults, it takes you a lot longer to get to that point when learning another language, whereas when they start in kindergarten, 
they're more of a sponge in that I, I think that that happens more easily and quicker. And it also, I think, opens up the door later on for other languages that you might not take because you would have to take your German, English, or German, French, or Spanish. Well, now they've got the Spanish under the, in, you know, in the bag, and they could maybe take Mandarin, which, you know, I think learning another language after learning a second language might be easier to come by after having the background of, of doing so. Um, so the choice that we made had a lot to do with the diversity, the diversity and the education, and now hearing that they have the AP opportunities in the middle school and high school is incredible. Um, to just get that leg up on college, which is you know very important to my husband and I, and you know like he was talking about the jobs. I mean that's just. I mean you have the same education level between two people. Somebody else is fluent in Spanish. Well, you know. That speaks for itself. So I think that that's, that goes a long way for the kids later on in life, too. So even if she maybe put up a little bit of a fit at first when she couldn't understand her teacher at the <laughs> very beginning, I think that, you know, now she appreciates it a lot more. And especially when she's older, she's going to be very glad that she had this opportunity and that we went ahead and went through with it. So... Do you and your daughter speak Spanish with each other? I occasionally try to say things in Spanish. She usually tells me to speak in English instead. So that's apparently reserved for school and her friends. Really? Yeah. Really? That's interesting. Yes. But she does like it when I read her books in Spanish. So. Well, now you've had you know, um, a strong background in, in your education in Spanish, in college, in high school, et cetera. Does she speak as well as you used to or uh, better? Oh, geez, that's uh, not, not quite as good as, you know, I once was. But, I mean, it's for just starting first grade. Okay. It's pretty incredible, the, the vocabulary that they have. Well, the, re the reason I said that is because children, young children, acquire foreign languages with much greater ease oh, yeah. than, than older <clears throat> older students. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's been proven over, over many years that, you know, if you start the children and here's an example, when they're very young, they they just take to it much easier than when we wait to middle school or high school to teach them a second language. So that's why I asked that mm -hmm. question. I mean, it wasn't a, a, a foolish question. It's, it's right. really true that young children, you know, and I, and I see it, you know, in my family, we have someone that's bilingual, and since the child was born, you know, they speak that language. And the, the facility for learning languages when children are young is phenomenal. And America, United States education needs to understand that and we need to do more of this across the country with our young children because it's so much easier for children to develop that second language. So thank you. Dr. Langel. Um, thanks, and thank you all for being here. I really enjoyed hearing from you. I just want to get back a little bit to what Caitlin um, was saying or what you, know, you were talking about, um, an ability to look at language, period. And I think it gets to what Brenda was saying. Once you've learned really another language plus your own, I think absolutely you learn your own. I mean, I, I used to teach actually Latin, and <laughs> most of the time I ended up teaching English because you can't understand a, Lat a language like Latin or Spanish that's synthetic, you know, where the end of a word changes by its use unless you understand the function of that word. So I'm sure, Caitlin, when you're talking about being analytical and comparing the languages, you're learning just so much more than just English and Spanish. I mean, you're learning linguistics. And so if you go on and you decide to study Farsi or Mandarin or whatever, you know, as Brenda was saying, it will be so much easier because you will know how words function. And that's so bedrock important, you know, in terms of learning any language. So yeah. I think that's another kind of, uh, you know, as Mark said, that's another kind of benefit of all of this. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know you're further along, obviously, than Diego or than your daughter, but... That's the kind of thing, I mean, as you go further, you'll see, I think, that ability that you now have to understand your own language, the second language, and then to learn a third or a fourth. Uh, you know, incredible opportunities ahead of you because of this. So thank you all for being here. Omar, do you have something you'd like to share with us? Sure. 
<laughs> now you can hear me? Okay. Uh, my name is Omar Macis, and I am currently teaching dual language kindergarten at Blair Elementary School. And just coming from the uh, classroom perspective, it was interesting when I was presenting with the idea of teaching dual language. A lot of things came to my mind. But it was a great opportunity for me to say, this is a time for me to grow, to break a lot of paradigm that as a teacher we have like a, we're carrying in our little bag and be open to new way of teaching, new learners and, and have those students come into your classroom. It, it is interesting, the first week I remember, I was like, how is this gonna work? And the third day I was so amazed by one of the students whose first language is English, and she said two words to me in Spanish. Agua, por favor, she wanted to drink water, and mochila, backpack. And it was the third day. <laughs> so that motivated me, like, and I believe, and it is amazing how, even now that I'm teaching how to read it in Spanish, how to write in Spanish, and all the, the in the content area, it is amazing that the English speakers, students, are using the English background to kind of make sense of the Spanish language, using yeah. the T and the sounds for the P, and mm -hmm. I mean, they're catching on. And it's amazing, they're, I thought that it was going to be very difficult, but right now, they're helping each other during English uh, time. It is amazing that they support each other, and they're in Spanish, that is 90% of the time, I had those kids who have proclaimed themselves to be the translator. When I'm, <laughs> when I'm talking to one student and I said, ¿Me puedes traer? ¿Puedes apagar la luz? And they're kind of just getting some words. Can you turn on the light? So the way I have those translators, which is good. They support each other. And when English time comes, it's interesting because the other one is helping the other oh, students. Great. So it's, it, you have to think differently when it comes to teaching the dual language two-way and be mindful of what you're planning, talking to the art teacher, to the music teacher, and plan together so what we're doing, it makes sense. So it's been interesting, it's been amazing, and I, and I love teaching dual language two-way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ms. McCaffrey. That was, that was a great way to put it, Omar, because I think that everybody on the board had the same concerns that you had, because we also have our little bag of what we think education is about, um, because we have such varied backgrounds, you know, tech guys and engineers and college professors and, and educators. Teachers. teachers, yeah. So um, <laughs> I think it's great that we have an administration that knows how to get people to um, break out of of what we what we view as traditional education and get into what is true education and that's you know um, making it there for everybody and innovating in the Waukesha School District. And can I say something? Um, it is interesting because um, I heard somebody say this and it's interesting when I'm with my friends and they know now that I'm teaching Spanish to English speakers they think that I'm working for a private school. So they go, you're not working for the school district of Waukesha? And I go, yes, I'm still continuing working for the school district of Waukesha. Because it, uh, nobody will think that we're gonna invest a lot of time, resources, and money right. to have this program. And they are just amazed that we made that decision. Right. That's right, so. very true. Mr. Baumgart, did you wanna? Just a couple, yeah, mm -hmm. a couple of things how things have changed. Uh, I grew up in a family which, in a household where it was two languages, English and German. My grandparents and my parents spoke German. <clears throat> and if they were speaking German, it was something that Billy and Carl and Don weren't supposed to hear. <laughs> That's the way it worked. <laughs> it meant they were talking about something we weren't in on. <laughs> so I didn't learn anything. Uh, but what I wanted to do is really tell them all of you, how I appreciate the fact that you have come with this stories to us. Uh, it, it confirms that those of us that were on CNI and on the board, what, seven years maybe, this first came up with us, mm -hmm. I don't know, six, seven years ago, that, that we did something right. 
and we don't always hear that. So the feedback that we get from you is, is, is so encouraging to us that we took a step and it and paid off. And, and I'd, like to, I'd like you to know that I appreciate hearing that from you and your families. So thank you. I would just like to add that perhaps about 100 years ago, because I think my mother would be over 100 now, you know, she was a, a first generation American. And so around 1912, 1915, 1920, everybody in Milwaukee spoke two languages because Milwaukee was full of immigrants from Germany, Ireland, Italy, Sicily, Austria, et cetera. But the interesting part is, is that they didn't share that second language with their children and their children's children, et cetera, because they so fiercely wanted to be American and they didn't want to be associated with that other language. So as soon as grandma, great grandma and grandpa were gone, or my grandma and grandpa were gone, there was no more speaking of Austrian or no more speaking of Italian in the families. And so we children who were very young at that time, and of course we didn't understand the language because they made no effort to teach it to us because we were American. Foreign languages got lost in the United States. So I think it's been with the, the coming of the new immigrants to the United States that has made speaking another language important. And it excites me because I'm sorry that my ancestors didn't do that for me. And so therefore, I couldn't do it for my children. And so you're making it so important again, as it is. And you pointed out all the reason it is. So thank you for sharing the importance and the beauty of speaking um, another language. Um, I think it's, it's so phenomenal when children can do that. And I'm really serious. I'm a former kindergarten teacher, Omar, and I taught at Blair a long time ago. I you don't. Yeah, I knew that. And I taught at Bethesda, oh. <laughs> kindergarten. And, uh, um, you know, of course, there weren't anything um, to do with bilingualism at that time. So it's exciting how far we've come in this district to broaden the lives of our children education. So thank you for your beliefs. And my goodness, thank you for your support. And spread it around because, um, you know, this is a phenomenal school district. And this is just one wonderful thing we're doing for the education of kids. <laughs>